We are back with A Moment in Crime, and because it's March and the legislative session resumed, I thought it would be interesting to look at a crime that occurred in the shadow of the Saskatchewan Legislative Building. A woman who worked in that building left dead on the steps, murdered by her husband. going way back in our archives for this story, back to 1926. And what I find so interesting about this case is as much as we're talking about something that happened decades ago, it sheds light on a problem that continues in this province, which has one of the highest rates of domestic violence and domestic homicide. So back in 1926, we had a woman named Rosie Schmidt, who was having trouble with her husband and had eventually left him. Rosie and Valentine came to this country in 1914. They were Russian immigrants of German heritage and they brought with them their two sons who were 16 and 13 at the time. She had put up with her husband, Valentine, who was an alcoholic and violent for quite some time. There are records from earlier that year in April where she went to uh, charge him with assault. And if you can imagine in 1926, what it must have taken a woman to go to a police station and actually swear out a charge of assault against her husband. But three days later, she goes back to the police station and, and, and has the charge revoked. She eventually, in June of that year, has had enough and she goes and gets a peace bond against Valentine Schmidt, her husband. Part of the basis for her seeking that peace bond was that he had beaten her with a washer board and he had also burned all of her clothes and he had also threatened to kill her with a revolver. He was required to put up a certain amount of money to say that he would abide by that bond. Valentine Schmidt, although he was a blacksmith by trade, he really wasn't doing a whole lot of work. So he can't come up with the money. He tries to borrow from friends and he has no success. So he ends up in jail for a certain amount of time. So eventually when Valentine does get out of jail, he starts hiding outside her apartment and watching what she's doing. And on one night in December 1926, uh, he actually hides in her bedroom and when she comes in uh, she screams with fright and the landlord of the apartment, Kate, comes and, and wrestles Valentine out of the room. Um, I guess we can only guess what Valentine maybe thought he was going to do. He was hiding under her bed, he had a bottle of whiskey with him and he had his clothes half off. Rosie worked two jobs. During the day she was a housekeeper and then in the evenings she was a cleaning woman who worked at the Saskatchewan Legislative Building. Valentine is feeling rather incensed because his wife has actually filed documents to separate from him. On December 27th he goes into a pawn shop and he buys a double-barreled shotgun which he says he needs to get rid of coyotes on his farm. But what he does with that gun is on December 28th he hides behind a car parked in front of the Saskatchewan Legislative Building and he lays in wait there for about an hour waiting for Rosie to show up. Around five o'clock Rosie and two of her friends who also work as cleaning women at the Saskatchewan Legislative Building take the streetcar down Albert Street. They get off by the Legislative Building and they start making their way down the sidewalk towards the sidewalk that will take them up to the west entrance and it's just shortly before they get to make that turn that Valentine Schmidt jumps out from behind a vehicle. He points that shotgun at Rosie and says in German, Rosie I shoot you, 
Rosie and her two friends turn and start running back to try to get away from this. And Valentine fires a shot into his wife's lower left back. She collapses down on the ground. Her two friends come to her aid uh, as Valentine takes off running across the lake. A fellow who worked in the library has sort of been witness to what's gone on. He comes out and he's trying to help Rosie and she dies in his arms in the snow. Valentine doesn't get very far because the alarm is raised for the police. An officer is coming in from the park from the opposite side and he sees this man running and stops him and he arrests Valentine Schmidt who admits he had just killed his wife. When Valentine went on trial, it was for capital murder, which was a hanging offense. So he tried very hard, with the help of his lawyer, to prove that he was insane at the time he killed Rosie. Part of Valentine's insanity defense was that he had been in the Russian army and he had taken a uh, sort of a graze to the side of the, of the head, but there was thoughts that there was still shrapnel inside his head. In the end, uh, Valentine was convicted of capital murder and ordered to hang. 